there is only war. The Makarian Crusade, one of the most storied military campaigns in the imperial history, began on the world of Makaria, which would later become a sacred shrine world of the Adeptus Ministorum. It was here that Lord Solar Makarius rallied his immense forces, boarding the transports waiting in orbit above the planet, ready to plunge into the unknown. The crusade ventured beyond even the reaches of the Emperor's Astronomicon, exploring the dark corners of the galaxy to the very edge of the galactic rim. Many of the worlds they encountered had once been part of the Imperium, but had fallen into isolation during the Age of Apostasy in the 36th millennia. These lost human colonies were just the beginning, as Macarius sought to reclaim lost territories, rebuilding the Imperium's shattered influence and bringing both light and dominion to the farthest reaches of the galaxy. The Crusades' first significant challenge came in the Karsk system, where they faced the wild cult of the Angel of Fire. The cult, which held sway over the system, was revealed to be a front for the worship of Chaos God Zeech. In a battle that tested not only his military genius but also his very soul, Macarius, wounded and vulnerable, confronted the so-called Angel of Fire, a fearsome lord of change, greater demon of Zeech. The demon offered him power, but Macarius, resolute in his fate, rejected chaos and stood unwavering in the Emperor's light, a testament to his iron will. As the crusade pressed on, it became a grinding march across the furthest western reaches of the Segmentum Pacificus and into the chaotic region of the Halo Stars. Macarius and his forces encountered countless alien species and long-lost human civilizations, each bringing their own challenges to the ever-expanding front of the crusade. The legend of Macarius grew with each victory, though darker trials still awaited at the edge of the galaxy. In the first year of the Macarius Crusade, the sheer might of Macarius's forces saw 100 worlds fall to the expanding realm of the Emperor. By the second year, his conquests had tripled, with over 300 more planets added to the Imperium. By the end of the third year, Macarius's combined armies had brought nearly 700 worlds to their knees, securing a place for the Imperium across vast distances of unexplored space. Each planet encountered a different fate under Macarius' relentless conquest. In many cases, the native populations were systematically ground down through force and attrition until there were too few left to resist the Imperial advance. Others were more directly assimilated, brought under the strict dominion of the Imperium in a manner reminiscent of the policies enacted during the Great Crusade and the 13th millennia. In the aftermath of each victory, the Ecclesiarchy missionaries followed close behind Macarius' armies. These holy agents worked to spread the worship of the God Emperor among these newly subjugated populations, ensuring the conquered worlds were brought fully into the Imperial fold. Alongside them came teams from the Inquisition, tasked with rooting out any heretics, mutants or witches among the populations, as well as enforcing the complete and absolute control of the Imperium over its new domains. Thus, through bloodshed, fate and fear, the Crusade reshaped vast regions of the galaxy, expanding the Emperor's reach further than it had been in millennia. By the end of Makarian Crusade in year 399 M41, the armies of Lord Solar Makarius stood undefeated, having reached the far western edges of the galaxy. They were deep within the Halo Stars, where the Astronomicon's telepathic beacon faltered. Beyond them lay the region cut off from the Imperium, home to ancient civilizations that had never felt the Emperor's light or known the peace of his rule. As they reached the galaxy's frontier, Macarius' generals and soldiers finally faltered. They pleaded with the Lord Solar to reconsider advancing into the unknown darkness beyond the Halo Stars, where the Emperor's light, well, no longer guided them. The Astronomicon's beacon could no longer offer protection, and the journey into the Immaterium would become dangerous. Navigators would struggle to steer the fleet through the unpredictable warp currents, and the astropaths would be cut off from the communication with the Imperial space. Moreover, Macarius' troops were weary. Years of relentless, brutal warfare across hundreds of worlds had left them drained, their morale dwindling. Many had grown fearful of the eerie and unsettling unknown. 
scout team sent into the Halo Stars had vanished without a trace, while those who returned spoke of strange phenomenon. Haunted stars and entire planets inhabited by what could only be described as ghosts and spirits. Faced with the refusal of his commanders and troops to advance beyond the Emperor's light, Lord Solar Macarius erupted in fury. He denounced his soldiers and generals as traitors and cowards, before retreating to his room, where he drowned his frustration in some quality alcohol. When he finally re-emerged, clear-headed once more, Macarius commanded his fleet to return to the Imperial space. His guardsmen cheered, hailing him as a hero and living saint of the Imperium, while his generals could finally get rid of the stress. Yet behind the triumphant facade, Macarius was a broken man. His dreams of limitless conquest in the name of the Emperor had been dashed by the frailty and fear of his subordinates, weakness he neither shared nor understood. On the return journey to the Imperial space in year 441, Macarius' fate took a darker turn. The official accounts claim that the Lord Solar succumbed to a jungle fever contracted on the world of Yucha, his soul ascending to join the Emperor. But there are others that believe he was killed by the assassins from Temple Venenum that specialize in poisons and toxins. It is presumed that High Lords of Terra saw him as a threat due to his influence and decided to get rid of him just to be sure. Some whispered that he chose to die, longing to rest alongside the Imperium's ancient heroes who would not have faltered in the face of danger as his troops had. However, hidden documents uncovered during Macarius' canonization as a saint of the Imperial cult tell a more sinister story. In truth, Macarius had been afflicted with Nerg-like plagues during the siege of the world of Loki, leaving him only weeks, perhaps days, to live. In a desperate final act, he launched an assault against Richter a former general of his who had fallen to chaos. Macarius succeeded in killing Richter, but shortly after, he was struck down by a hidden cultist alongside Inquisitor Drake. Yet even this version of events may have been a cover-up. Some claim that the Imperium, unwilling to let Macarius die from Nurgle's taint, orchestrated his death to preserve his heroic legacy. Whispers suggest that Inquisitor Drake had deliberately fed tactical information to Richter to prolong the conflict, and that after Richter's death, an Officio Assassinorum agent, disguised as an Imperial Stormtrooper, executed both Macarius and Drake to ensure their silence. Despite the betrayal and tragedy surrounding his final moments, Macarius's men mourned deeply for their fallen leader. They revered him as a saint of the Imperial Creed, a figure whose glory rivaled that of the ancient Primarchs, even if the truth behind his end was far darker than they ever knew. One notable conflict that I think is essential to giving soul to this whole campaign of the Macarius Crusade was when General Brogan, Crassus, led a grueling assault against advanced, independent human civilization of Adrantis V. The planet, known for its highly developed technology, managed to hold off Macarius' forces for nearly two standard years. General Crassus' 5th Army Group bore the brunt of the conflict, losing 90% of its combat strength in the relentless War of Attrition. Despite Crassus' best efforts, Adrantis V's advanced defenses proved too formidable to overcome through conventional means. In a desperate move to break the stalemate, Lord Solar Macarius ordered the comet to be directed at the planet, unleashing a weapon of mass destruction. The impact devastated Adrantis V, wiping out much of its population and shattering its defenses. The remaining survivors, overwhelmed by the catastrophic destruction, were forced to surrender and accept Imperial rule. This brutal tactic ensured Macarius' conquest of Adrantis V, but it came at a heavy cost in both lives and destruction, but also it showed the lengths to which the Lord Solar was willing to go to expand the Emperor's dominion. But this is what makes him so unique. He wasn't a space marine, he wasn't a Primarch, he was just a man fighting for the Imperium. A man that had greater success in span of few years than entire chapters of Space Marines in their whole time of existence. And this is how Imperial Saints are born, how legends are born. Simple men that try to do everything they can in the name of humanity, because by their own laws it is just the right thing to do, even if sometimes it means killing a fellow man. But what do you think of this conflict and this general flinging comets at planets? Let me know in the comments below. 
If you enjoyed the video, then leave a like and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss my daily upload. Become a member for just $1 to cast your vote for the weekly content, and join my Patreon for just $2 a month to get access to some of the most amazing, high definition, never seen before Warhammer 40,000 artworks, which you can download and use as you want. Every month we post something new there, so I promise you'll get the bang for your buck and more. Remember to join the Discord to show your memes, and with that in mind, I'll see you next time. Nerd.